Welcome to Frankert Auto. Um, today we are going to learn why we do compression test on an internal combustion engine, uh, how do we perform it, and uh, why do we do it. Compression test is performed to see what, what's the condition of the, the valves and what's the condition of the, the compression rings. Here are the three rings on the piston. So your top, so this is a four stroke engine basically. The top ring is compression ring, so is the second one. When the piston goes up, these two rings touch the cylinder walls and they are the ones that are creating uh, the compression in the engine. Uh, the bottom ring is oil ring, we'll talk about that in a different lesson. But the two main are the top two rings. And here's a valve, okay? So it's a combination of the valve and the rings that build the compression. Um, when we talk about valves, the valves are different size. This part of the valve intake is bigger than the exhaust and that's for volumetric efficiency. Once again, we'll do that uh, in a different lesson. On average, good compression for a, for a good engine should be about 160 PSI, pounds per square uh, inch. Anything less than about 100 PSI is not acceptable. The engine doesn't really fire. The cylinder, not the engine, the cylinder that has less than 100 PSI, it doesn't really fire. And when you're doing the compression test, you're doing obviously on multiple cylinders, there shouldn't be any more than 15% difference in, um, in compression. Um, if you have too high of a compression, like you got 180, and if it's just an average engine, not we're not talking about racing engines, if it's just a regular engine, most likely what's happened is there is carbon deposit on the piston. It won't be this much, I'm just exaggerating that. There'd be a little carbon deposit on the piston. And what that carbon deposit does is it, the, the volume of the cylinder changes if there is carbon deposit on any deposit on the valve or on top of the piston. Just to go over some parts, we have our piston right here with three rings, compression rings, top two are compression rings. Well, actually, the second one is also called a wipe ring when the piston is coming down. And the third one is the oil ring. So here's the piston. Here's your connecting rod. Connecting rod is right here. And then you have a cylinder. And then you have valves. You have exhaust valve and intake valve. On compression stroke, when the piston goes up, both the valves are closed, your intake and exhaust valves are closed, and piston goes up. If there is any leak from the rings, if the rings don't have proper contact, and if the combustion from here, if it's leaking down into the, the crankcase, or if the valves are burned or something wrong with the valves, and the, the combustion is leaking out of the valves, that's what we need to find out, and that's the reason why your compression would drop. So basically rings or the valves, we need to find out which one is gone if the compression is low. To perform a compression test, we will need ratchet, spark plug socket, extension on some cars, um, and uh, compression gauge, gauge obviously. Before we start our compression test, we have to do a couple of things. One is we have to disconnect the spark, and one is we have to disconnect the fuel. To disconnect the fuel, if you go to the fuse box and uh, if you look for a fuse or a relay that controls fuel pump or injectors, so in this case we have a fuel pump relay. We also have fuel pump fuses on this. Okay, fuel pump fuse right here. So we could take the fuel pump fuse out or we can remove the relay, whatever is easier for you. So that's one way of doing it. So in this case, we will take the fuel pump relay out if your car doesn't have a fuel pump relay accessible, like if it's under the dash and you don't really want to go under the dash, there will be a fuel pump fuse always and a relay somewhere. Uh, the other thing you can look for is, you can look for electronic fuel injection. Anything that reads FI or EFI, so in this case you can see the EFI, you can remove that relay. So in this case, we have EFI relay right here. So bottom two are heater and fan. So heater, fan, uh, the relay that's missing here is AC clutch. 
this is your EFI relay. So this is our EFI relay. So we can remove that relay. Sometimes it might just read uh, FI. So that's for fuel injection. And uh, in this case, the relay is, so this is a Honda, not that it matters. You're just looking for a fuel, inject fuel injection or a fuel pump relay. And the reason we disconnect the fuel is because while you're doing the compression, injectors are gonna keep spraying the fuel inside the cylinder. And if they do that, your cylinders are gonna get washed, there won't be any oil left on it, your compression is gonna drop. Now to disconnect spark, depending on what car you're working with, there are multiple different ways of disconnecting spark. I'll try to show you as many as I can. I mean, we have three, four cars here, so I can show you multiple ways of doing that. So if you follow the spark plug wires, the spark plug wires, this is an older vehicle, this is a 30 year old vehicle, and the spark plug wires will end up in the distributor. And if there is a wire that is leaving the distributor, a single wire right from the middle of the distributor, if it's leaving, you follow that and it will end up at the coil. So it's the ignition coil that produces the spark. Basically, so if you disconnect the ignition coil, so I'm trying to do these both things at the same time. So if you disconnect the coil, you will disconnect the spark. So if there is no input, there is nothing going in, there is nothing going to come out of the wire and nothing is going to go to the distributor, go to the spark plug wires. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. So if you go from a 30 year old vehicle to let's say 20 year old vehicle, it's a bit newer. It doesn't have a coil, external coil. The coil on this one is inside the dist distributor. So you can see there are four wires going to the plugs, but there is nothing coming out. So the coil in here, it's inside the distributor. Basically, you need to find out what is sending the power into the distributor. So it'll be a low voltage wires, the primary wires. So if you disconnect the primary wires that go to the distributor, so if you disconnect these two plugs, uh, it's uh, not easy to remove this with one hand. Let me take those off. There we go. So if you remove these plugs, so nothing going in, nothing's going to come out of the wires. Modern cars, they have something called direct uh, ignition system. So basically, each plug will have its own coil. The coils are attached right onto the plug, right on top of it. Its, the idea is still the same. To disconnect the spark on this type, all you're doing is pulling the plugs that are going to the coil. Take these plugs off that are going to the ignition coil just before you take the plugs out. Okay, if you disconnect these, you have prevented the spark. Uh, this is a 1991 Suzuki. It's got um, 330,000 kilometers, basically no power. So we're going to do a compression test on this and see what results we get, see what the compression is at. Um, so the first thing we have uh, to disconnect the spark and the fuel, we'll do that. I've shown you multiple ways of doing that. Then we have to number these wires. It's a four cylinder, uh, 1.6 liter. We'll disconnect these wires, we'll number these wires, and then we'll disconnect these wires. So we have numbered our wires. They are one, two, three, and their fourth one is right here. Make sure you number them. You don't want to mix them up once you're done the compression test. Next, we're going to take the air snorkel off just to make it easy. You don't have to take it off, but it's just going to make my life a bit easier. It's just one screw here and a couple on this side. I'll take that off. Okay, so we're going to remove the spark plug wires. A uh, couple of things, well, one thing you want to watch is don't ever just go and start pulling the wires straight out. Especially for older vehicle, they break off. And if one breaks off, most of the time you're buying the whole kit. So the idea is that make sure you're able to twist the wire. If you are able to twist the wire, most of the time it will come off in one piece. So we have all the four wires off. Now we're going to take our spark plugs out. So we're ready to take our plugs out. We're going to use our spark plug socket. Okay, remove the plugs. And we're going to do this for all four plugs. So we are, uh, here's our compression gauge. We're going to screw it in where we got the plug out. So it's just simple, just line it up and screw it in. 
So we have our uh, compression gauge hooked up and uh, I have someone sitting on the driver's seat. We are going to crank the engine five times. So what we're looking for here is the movement on the gauge five times. Let's do this. Okay, so we have compression about 120 is what we have. That's not a, enough compression. And we're gonna do the same thing for all four. Move to the next one. We need to release this pressure. Can you press that button please? Thank you. So make sure you release the pressure before you go to the next cylinder. We're ready to do this uh, second plug. Okay. So once again, we are 130, still not enough. We had 120 on the first one and 130 on the second one. We are ready to do the same thing for number three. Let's do this. Uh, same, about 120, 122. Here's our last one, number four, okay. That's the most I'm getting out of it, so 130 is the most I got, which is still low. So our compression on all four cylinders, it was uh, 120 to 130. So obviously the compression is either leaking from the valves or it's leaking from the rings. We need to figure that out. So what we do is we take the gauge out, we put some oil, about one tablespoon of motor oil, I would say 1030, any oil, motor oil, you put the oil in, and what the oil is going to do is the oil is going to go sit around the rings. So the oil that you put in through this hole where the spark plug is, the oil is going to go start filling up this gap that's between the ring. We're talking about hair thickness or less than that. But the oil is going to go sit between the wall and the ring and it's going to fill that gap. And then we do the compression again. So if the compression changes quite a bit, let's say it jumps from 120 to 160 that is telling me that the rings are gone because the oil has filled the gap and now the compression has gone up if the compression doesn't change it just goes from 120 to 125 or 130 that means the rings are fine but the valves are gone so we're going to do that next it's called wet test so i have some motor oil and i'm going to squirt some in the spark plug hole okay and as i said this is called wet test and we're going to do the same thing we're going to put the gauge back in and see if the compression changed so we have the oil in gauge back on we're going to do the same thing five cranks let's do this okay so our compression has improved this number one was at 120 and now it's just above 140. Um, that's telling me it's got weak rings. For our second one, all right. Oh, oh, that was I believe it was at 122. It's crossed 150. Yep, definitely rings. Three, we're ready. All right, yeah, let's go. All right, same thing. Went over 150. Keep for number four. Yeah, so they have all improved, um, you know, from 120 to 150. So that is definitely rings. We will be taking this engine apart. So we're ready to put everything back in. We're gonna put the plugs back in. Just a reminder, when you're putting the plugs back in, don't use a ratchet on it. Make sure you got enough threads on. You know, aluminum head, if you put ratchet on it, you might end up uh, cross-threading the, the cylinder head. There's nothing worse than that. So always make sure you just have it finger tight first. We have all our plugs in. Uh, we're ready to put the wire on. When you put the wire back on, on especially on the older cars, with the direct ignition system, you might not be able to hear this, but when you're doing older vehicles you'll feel and you can hear the click when the wire is properly on like if you just leave it here that's not going to send the, the spark down to the spark plug so i felt it i don't know if you heard it there was a tiny click 
Uh, we have everything wrapped up, wires are back on, the coil is plugged in, the fuel pump fuse is in. Uh, now we're going to start it. When you start the vehicle, it will smoke, so don't start panicking over it. Okay, let's start. So when you start the vehicle, just because you had so much oil in the cylinders, that's going to smoke like that. So don't panic over it. Let it run for 10 minutes, it will burn out. Thank you for watching our video. Hopefully I was able to show something. Once again, thanks.